Welcome to Northeast Conference Football Digest. Hello, everybody. I'm Ralph Ventry, and I'm ready to give you a tour of week four on the NEC Gridiron. Five of the Northeast Conference's seven teams are in action this week, all on Saturday. We'll give you three key storylines for each of those five matchups on today's show. As for the teams who are idle in week four, that would be Robert Morris and Bryant. Both teams coming off week three losses, and both will resume action in week five on September 28th. Robert Morris will take on VMI, while Bryant will open Northeast Conference play against the NEC preseason favorite, Wagner Seahawks. That's September 28th in week five. But now, it's back to week four. Wagner will make a short trip in week four as it goes over the Outer Bridge, down the New Jersey Turnpike, and into Delaware to take on the CAA member Blue Hens. Three storylines for Wagner and Delaware. Number one, this is a bounce back game for both teams. Both Wagner and Delaware suffered lopsided losses at the hands of FBS opponents in week three. Delaware fell 51-7 at Navy, while Wagner dropped a 54-0 decision up at Syracuse. You better believe both teams will be looking to get that sour taste out of their mouths come Saturday. Storyline number two, will Wagner be able to establish the run on the road? Wagner running back Dominique Williams had a tough go of it up at Syracuse in week three, managing only 34 yards on the ground. But even with that performance, Williams is still averaging over 100 yards per game over the season's first three weeks. Will he be able to carry the load against a Delaware defense that was sliced up by Navy's run-heavy attack in week three? The Navy midshipmen gained over 300 yards on the ground against Delaware. We'll see if Wagner can have similar success. Storyline number three for Wagner at Delaware. Can the Seahawks contain the Blue Hens' high-octane offense? Don't be deceived, folks. Just because Delaware only managed seven points at Navy in week three doesn't mean that this team is not capable of moving the football because they are. Delaware showed that in weeks one and two when it faced FCS opponents, totaling over 1,000 yards of offense in those two games. UD quarterback Trent Hurley is averaging more than 270 pass yards per game against FCS opponents this year, and receiver Michael Johnson has back-to-back 100-yard -back games against FCS teams. It will certainly be a challenge for the Wagner defense and lockdown cover corner, a preseason all NEC selection, Jared Dodon. Moving down Saturday's docket, next up is Sacred Heart against Choen. For the second straight week, the Pioneers will be at home hosting a CIAA member. Three storylines for this one. Storyline number one. Look to see if the Pioneers put the pedal to the metal from the start. When Sacred Heart took on CIAA member Lincoln in week three, the Pioneers shot out of the gate, scoring touchdowns on each of their first four offensive possessions. They'll look to get off to another hot start come Saturday to make sure Choen does not gain any confidence early. Storyline number two. Will the Pioneers keep on trucking in their run game? Sacred Heart, which averages more than 300 rush yards per game thus far this season, sits atop the entire football championship subdivision when it comes to rushing offense. The Pioneers are especially dangerous because they employ a three-pronged attack. Whether it's the big bruising tailback to Shawna Spence or the elusive Sean Bell, 
and even quarterback R.J. Knoll is a threat to take it to the house every time he touches the football. In fact, the rookie quarterback has scored a rushing touchdown in each of his first three collegiate starts. Storyline number three. Will Sacred Heart prevent Choen from having any success running the football? Sacred Heart will be the second FCS opponent that Choen has faced this year. They opened up with a 47-7 setback at FCS Independent Charlotte. One of the keys to success in that game for the Charlotte 49ers, a stifling run defense. Charlotte held Choen to negative five yards rushing in that week one matchup. Sacred Heart hopes to take one out of Charlotte's playbook when they meet Choen in week four at Campus Field. Moving down the docket to game number three, which takes us up to Albany, New York State's capital. The Central Connecticut Blue Devils will be the second NEC team this year to face the CAA member Great Danes come Saturday. Three storylines for this one. Storyline number one, see if Central can limit the mistakes on Saturday. The Blue Devils lost to the Great Danes last year by a score of 63 to 34, but the game was much closer than that final margin. The Danes were able to pull away from the Blue Devils by returning two fumbles for touchdowns and also took a kickoff back for a score. If the Blue Devils can clean up those mistakes, they should be right there step for step with Albany in week four. The second storyline for Central at Albany. Will the Blue Devils be able to stop the run? Central struggled mightily last week, allowing over 400 yards rushing to Holy Cross. The Crusaders' success running the football meant that Holy Cross ran 26 more plays than CCSU did. The Blue Devils are focusing on stopping the run. Let's see if they can make progress in that area when they're up in Albany. Storyline number three for Central Connecticut. Will the Blue Devils show the resolve that Coach Jeff McInerney is looking for? Coach Mack, known on Twitter as JMFireUp underscore, tweeted out earlier this week that in order for his Blue Devils to bounce back from their 0-3 start, they'll have to show some resolve. Well, Central Connecticut can start against an old friend, an old NEC member, and current CAA member, Albany, this Saturday in the Capital Region. We're hitting the home stretch here on the week four edition of NEC Football Digest. Next up, we go out to Ohio, where Duquesne will meet Youngstown State. Three storylines for this first ever meeting between the two programs. Storyline number one, did the bye serve Duquesne well? After dropping a 23-20 matchup in week two at Dayton, Duquesne had a bye in week three. Will they have fresher legs against Youngstown come Saturday? While the Dukes were off in week three, the Penguins fell to FBS member Michigan State 55-17. So look to see if Youngstown has any lingering effects from that loss and if Duquesne is well rested. Storyline number two. An old NEC coach used to say that you run the football to set up the run. Yes, the run game is extremely important, especially in NEC football. The Dukes hope to kickstart their run game on Saturday at Youngstown. Over their first two games, Duquesne averaged only 2.3 yards per carry. They'll look to increase that number at YSU and take some pressure off of rookie quarterback Dylan Buchel. Storyline number three for Duquesne at Youngstown. Running the football effectively is important, as is stopping the run on the other side of the ball. The Dukes will have their hands full come Saturday at Youngstown, being that the Penguins, in two games against FCS opponents this season, 
are averaging more than 350 yards on the ground. While the Penguins have quite a talented backfield, Duquesne has a great crop of linebackers, including Dorian Bell and Sam Martello. Let's see if Bell, Martello, and company can bottle up that Penguin run game on Saturday. And just one more game to go on the week four edition of NEC Football Digest. This game takes us out to Loretto, Pennsylvania, where the St. Francis Red Flash will host CIAA member Lincoln, a Division II program. Three storylines for the Red Flash against Lincoln. Storyline number one, home sweet home. St. Francis certainly must be pleased that it'll play in front of its home crowd at the goal field for the first time in 2013 this Saturday. St. Francis opened the season with back-to-back -back road games against nationally ranked opponents. No easy task. Come Saturday, however, they'll be back within the friendly confines of the goal field. Storyline number two, the Red Flash's run game. Last week, Lincoln struggled defending the run up at Sacred Heart as the Pioneers rushed for nearly 400 yards against Lincoln. St. Francis, which was the number one rushing offense in the Northeast Conference last season and has gotten off to a nice start in 2013, looks for similar success. The Flash will be feeding the football to their workhorse, fifth-year senior Kyle Harbridge. Harbridge reached the 100-yard rushing mark in each of his first two games this season after missing the entire 2012 campaign due to injury. If Harbridge gets it going on Saturday, Lincoln can be in for a long afternoon. And the final storyline for St. Francis against Lincoln. Keep an eye on the matchup between the St. Francis secondary and Lincoln's pass offense. Lincoln struggled moving the ball through the air against Sacred Heart, passing for only 70 yards in week three. The Red Flash have quite a formidable secondary as well and should be able to give Lincoln some trouble. Veteran safety Jake DeMetal is a hard-hitting presence and cornerback Daquan Minter is coming off a two-interception performance at James Madison in week three. We'll see if the Flash can ground Lincoln's pass attack on Saturday at the goal field. So there you have it, folks. The entire NEC football week four slate. We ran it down for you. Two of this week's five matchups, well, you can watch those live free of charge at NECfrontrow.com. Sacred Heart against Choen and St. Francis against Lincoln. Those two games will be brought to you live on Front Row come Saturday. Also, be sure to look out for our weekly NEC Football Google Hangout. This week, we hung out with St. Francis running back Kyle Harbridge, so make sure you check out the Front Row archives and see what Kyle had to say. Once again, I'm Ralph Entry, Thank you for spending your time with us and have fun in week four on the gridiron.